Well, if you've ever served in Nigeria, you understand how important NYSE is about. And sometimes you become a very popular core member amongst your peers, uh, perhaps uh, owing to some of the what they call community development that you do. But today, there's one core member that seemed to be so popular, and that's the Minister of Arts, Culture and Creative Economy, Hanatu Musawa. Well, but again, by the way, she's also refuted a statement credited to her that she did not violate any known law regarding her appointment as minister and her status as a serving NYSE core member. Now, in a statement signed by Deputy Director, Press Federal Minister of Information and National Orientation, Suleiman Haruna, the minister said the statement did not originate from her and is inaccurately associated with her. The minister called on the public to be cautious of unverified information. Quote, I deeply value and appreciate the support, solidarity and understanding of Nigerians in these times. For clarity, I wish to state that I have not issued any statement on the current issue. While well, uh, our producers tried to reach uh, Hanatu Musawa, we'll place a series of calls and uh, texts, and we're hoping that that uh, uh, invitation is still open. She or her representative uh, can come on the show and expatiate uh, uh, for clarity's sake on the controversy. Well, the controversy is still ongoing, and uh, there have been arguments and counter arguments over what is right and what isn't. Well, let's have a conversation on the legal bits. What does the law say about it? I'm joined now in the studio by the lawyer and a member of the Lincoln Inn in the UK, Daniel Boala. Good to see you and thanks for your time. Thank you for having me. Good evening. And I know, Fester, you've been following this. I'll, I'll start in the middle, which is right. one, of the, <laughs> one of the questions people have always asked. Right. Is it a must that people serve? Yes. Um, section, I think section two of the NYC Act uh, says that to the effect that it is mandatory for every Nigerian who has gone through bachelor's of laws degree or HND or NCE to serve in the Youth Service Corps. It is mandatory. And that's why it goes further to provide for, for example, ground for exemption. If you are sick, you can be exempted. Or if you have been honored with a national honor, then you don't need to go and serve. Or during this period, you have also served in intelligence agencies like SSA, SSS, NIA, Defense Intelligence College. You see some of those provisors. And if you look at the intelligence agencies, you will know that the NYC Act is not a joke. We are not playing. So, and the spirit and later, the later of the National Youth Service Corps is meant to be the criteria for ascertaining not just patriotism and national service, but the character and fitness of anybody who will either be employed or be appointed. Now, those who try to support the view to say, if you're a youth corps member, you can be appointed because there is a difference between appointment and employment. Absurdity. Any services that you will render for which you will be rewarded by way of salary or emolument under a structured or, yes, structured organization, private sector or public sector, it is mandatory that you provide evidence of national youth service. That's why. Even if you want to go to the bank, like this organization where you are, are privileged to be running, anybody who is going to be recruited here and he says he or she is a graduate uh, and submits his CV without NYC, you will not take them. There is this thing called express provision of the law and there is the implied provision of the law. Now, even where there are no express terms governing landlord and tenant, there is the implication of law that these are the covenant that the landlord has, these are the covenant of the tenant, and these are the expected enjoyment that the tenant you know, is, is expected to have. Now, to tell you that it is that serious, Section 13 of the NYC Act provides for punishment. Now, it, my worry is that apart, just, apart from saying whether or not she's eligible to continue to serve as a minister, yet a youth core member, there is even an aspect of this act that we have not seen. Because if you look at Section 13, 
It says anybody who has failed to serve continuously for the period as specified in that order, you know, mandate, whatever it is that you are given. Because when you are called up, you will be given a call up later. Mm. And the call up later would state in emphatic and clear terms the number of months or the period of time you are expected to serve. It says anybody who fails to do that when you have accepted, in other words, when you have been mobilized, you probably appear in an orientation camp, or you have in fact started after you finish your orientation camp, that anybody who absconded, it says is guilty of an offense and is liable upon conviction to pay in those days 2,000 naira or to serve for a period of 12 months or even both. Now, wherever the law provides for punishment, it means that the obligation that is on that person is mandatory. So the big question is, can some, because people have cited the decision came in the Oshun's case where Justice Tayo said it is not mandatory for you to serve, you know, uh, you know that uh, your service is not mandatory to appointment. There's a distinction between that and where you have subscribed to serve. If you have not served, you can approach the president and said that Kemi Adeoshun's decision has now said you can appoint me without a youth service co certificate or discharge. Mm. When you have undertaken to serve and you are in fact in the period of service, you cannot be appointed, you cannot be employed. Now, you will find a situation where somebody who is a UCOP member will preside over a ministry that will have more than 90% of the workforce individuals that have all served and presented their certificate of service as a condition precedent for employment. Now, look at the contradiction here. Secondly, and most importantly, access to public funds. That's why when you are going to England, for example, you get a visa or to study, they will make it clear that you do not have recourse to public funds. And they will state the period you are expected to work. They limit it. Because anything that involves public funds is as important as in business context where they say money is life. Now you have somebody who has taken up appointment of government where the person will be entitled to remuneration, allowances, benefit, everything you can think of under the heaven. Meanwhile, that person is still, quote unquote, serving under the national uh, you know, uh, that's where I want to comment now. It d doesn't this look like a, a, a precedent, a, a case that uh, w should be tested? Because now we're talking about the case of someone who is serving. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about someone who has absconded. She's serving at the moment, and uh, according to that reporter, eight months gone, mm -hmm. four months to go. So how does it work for someone already serving mm -hmm. and you get an, an appointment mm -hmm. from the government of your nation the law is and it is clear you are not eligible to take on appointment or employment until you have completed your compulsory or mandatory service and this is my fear you see as a nation we keep lowering standards in order to meet the conveniences and demands of people and times and before we know, as a nation, we'll come to a point where we have all the relevant laws on ground, but we have challenged those laws because individuals who have failed to meet up with the standards, we have had to bend the law just to satisfy them. You know that recently, Mr. President had also appointed a student in the university as a member of a committee. That is illegal. So you see how, as a nation, gradually, gradually, and before now, if you do not have a degree, there are certain things and political uh, 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 offices, you, you, you couldn't dare do that. But in 2019, we saw in the case of President Buhari, where the court was approached and the court further lowered the standard to say that as a criteria for you to run for the office as a president, you don't even need to present the certificate. All you need is to show that you attended, meaning that transcript will become condition precedence to becoming the president. Again, lowering the standards. But in our everyday life, these are not the things that are tolerated, whether in the public service or in the private sector. And in fact, most of these public officers who are contesting in support of that probably have under their employ, either in the, at the private level 
or even in the public level, individuals that if you do not have the NYSC certificate, you couldn't be taken. So should we as a country, it's just like when we talk about reducing the cost of governance. I mean, what I see where people hypocr hypocritically talk about this present administration's effort to reduce the cost of governance. Do we even understand what it means to reduce the cost of governance? So we, we, we keep lowering the standards because of individual. And, and I, I feel so sad to have to analyze this because uh, the person in question, the person affected is a friend of mine, right? And uh, I turned down various invitations to you know, talk on this issue. But I just realized that as a nation, what's our obligation? What's our utmost duty as, as, as people in this country? We need to push this envelope. We need to grow as a democracy. So in, in this case, what should she have done? Because I'm looking, let's say uh, you're not here tonight right. and um, the friendship level you know, right. uh, comes in. What would you have said to her the moment she was announced as a minister nominee? If I was, uh, if I actually, if I were to be in the, either as a friend or as a president, if as a friend I knew of this, I would advise her to personally meet Mr. President. She has his confidence to say, Your Excellency, I understand that uh, every six months you are going to reject the cabinet. I, I am serving. I have three more months to finish. And I, I thank you for the honor that I know you're offering. May I request if you can defer my appointment to such a time as when I complete? So a deferment would have been it? Yes, the appointment, deferring yes, the, the appointment. appointment. Yes, so that this thing does not, my fear is it doesn't push to a point where rather than debating whether she's eligible to uh, be appointed or not, it will now be the question of she should be prosecuted. Because if you look at section 11, it says anybody who has started serving and absconded is already guilty of an offense as liable to punishment. So, so I, I do not want a situation where the conversation, you know, in the case of Kemi Adeoshin, it started like that. When the information first came, she was supposed to honorably deal with it. And then so many people were brought to bring in various interpretations. And it almost led her to prison. She had to then, you know, uh, uh, resign. So, so if, 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 I were, if I was going to advise her, if I were the president, I would look at what I call the standards I'm trying to build. You want to run a country. I mean, if you have a grandson and your grandson is caught up in that kind of situation, what are you going to do as a person? Aren't you going to ask the person to correct the anomaly? Are we not uh, looking to the future? Can't we, can't we increase the bar? Why is it that every election cycle of our life will bring the standards down? She is a brilliant person. She has a degree and probably a master's. This is just an infraction relating to NYSC, which can be corrected without the necessary drama. But if she continue to serve, now let me tell you what happened in Kenya. And, and it comes down to the issue of cost of governance yeah, that we're, quick, we're quickly to because we're running off. In, in Kenya, at point, the Kenyatta made a lot of appointments. Civil society organization in that country, just like we have our CISLAC and the rest, they took it to court. And they said the due process of law was not followed and that merit-based procedure was not applied. Do you know what the courts in Kenya did? They struck down 130 appointees of the president of Kenya. These proactive courts. But you see, when these things are dragged to our Nigerian court, the, the standard will further be lowered. The standard will further be lowered. May we not find ourselves in a position where it will be said, you do not even require to go to school to become the president. Dana Bala, a fine place to leave it. Many Thank thanks. You. Thank you.